get it going. If not, I'm not going to worry about it. Just concentrate on painting and using the colors that I'm using. Um, so pull down here. Okay, so this morning I did this little sketch of a street scene with wisteria. And um, with my wisteria that we were painting last week, you know, it reminded me of when we lived up in Ventura in California because as you drive up the freeway there into Santa Barbara, when it's wisteria season, they're just going crazy out there. And it's just like purple trees forever. So um, that reminded me of just driving through the streets of Santa Barbara. So I made up this little scene and I thought we might try to just pencil sketch that out and then paint it and I'll do it on real watercolor paper. I'm glad you can hear too because I'm, uh, I moved the, um, the microphone over a little bit more and uh, I'll try to stay in front of it. In fact, I could move it more, even more over. So then I won't have to remember to do it. It'll just be done. And I can bring it down just a tad. There we go. Irene and Kathleen, I tried to get Christopher to come in to uh, so you could see him and say hi to him, but he will not go on live with me. <laughs> I think he knows too many people on Twitch that he doesn't want to reveal himself for video game or whatever reason. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so um, this is very abstract, so very loose. So we'll try to paint loose today. And then what I thought I'd do after that is um, we'll work with some of these sketches that I sent you photos of. Some of these photographs we're going to make sketches of and try to turn them into paintings. Okay, so let's go ahead and sketch out on your sketchbook paper or watercolor paper, whatever you want to use. We're going to sketch this out. And it's a very simple sketch. So about a third of the way up the paper here. Well, actually a little more than a third. But definitely don't cut your paper in half because that's a bad composition. Just draw a line and um, maybe behind here we'll give the suggestion of, you know, maybe there's like a building there that's down the street. And um, don't make that line too dark because we're mostly going to cover it up with these tree shapes anyway that are here. And maybe on this one I'll use a charcoal pencil just for fun. So you can really see some of these shapes, these trees. And some of that charcoal will blend in with the watercolor. Now I'm just giving the street a little bit of perspective here. And, you know, maybe we're looking at it kind of at an angle. Do I want to do it this way or the other way? Let's do it the same as I have it in the drawing. I kind of made it so that we're... Maybe we've got a couple people here. Um, down the street. And then we've got our guys. Maybe they're going to be off to the side here just a little. For your people shapes, just do a, you know, make them look like a little carrot almost. Or an ice cream cone, sort of lopsided. And maybe this person has a girlfriend. DJ, we're putting a girl in there with a dress on for you. And since I didn't leave very much room over on this side, um, we'll just 
give this guy a little dog here. His little dog is hanging out with him. Maybe he's behind him like that. I should make these guys a tiny bit smaller, actually. They kind of got a little bit too big. I hate to change them now, but I'm going to. Otherwise, our, our drawing might not work out so good. Just make them a little bit a little bit shorter there. Because I want enough room for some reflections coming off. And do a few lines over here to indicate the sidewalk. And maybe same thing on this side. You guys must be busy painting because no one's chatting. I wonder if Kat's around or if she's working. Let's see. And Terry from Phoenix was gonna jump on, but I don't know if she's around. Speaking of Phoenix, it got a little warm here today in Raleigh, but I'm not sure exactly what the temperature is. <laughs> it's getting humid. All right, so maybe on this side, <clears throat> Well, let's get these trees in. I want to give these trees some. Is it for? Oh, Terry's watching. Okay. <laughs> Hello. It's hot in Phoenix. How hot is it? I want to know. And then here, maybe we'll just put, um, what should I put on this side? Hmm. I don't need much. It can just be all, maybe we'll just give the suggestion of a building here. It's probably mostly going to get um, covered up with my... Oh, she said it's going to get up to 100 today. Okay, so uh, maybe that's there. Anyway, we're going to put some trees here on the uh, a big tree here on this side of the drawing. And it is going to take over this side of the page like that. Maybe back here, maybe there's another one, like a smaller one. So maybe we'll have that. We'll have this one here, and maybe in this one too we'll put a few uh, Well, it's kind of a rainy day. Uh, I guess we'll just leave it like that. We'll just make it kind of abstract in the background. Maybe there's a tree there. That should do my dog. Let's give him another leg. On the dog legs you can kind of point them in just a tiny bit. So it's kind of like a, a little bit of a triangular space there in between his legs. And then just a tail sticking up. These figures back here, these figures are all going to be pretty dark. The one thing I didn't get in here is a car, so I made my figure so big, but um, we can. Hmm, maybe I'm trying to decide if we should just quit the car, forget the car, or maybe put. Maybe we'll just.
I didn't really leave room for it. Let me see what this will look like if I try to add it in here. Typically cars are about shoulder height on people. Yeah, maybe we'll just have a car here. What the heck. No, it's not going to fit with that tree there. I can move it over maybe so it's way down there. There we go. There it is, way in the background. See it? <laughs> okay. Uh, we got a couple people there. Uh, I don't know why these people, it's going to be kind of a rainy, you know, splashy thing, so I don't know why they're walking around in the rain, but. <laughs> Okay, Kathleen is saying, oh, you think there's something in the lens of the camera? Let me see. Hey, Carly, how are you? Oh, maybe that's what it is. Oh, DJ, you're so smart. Let me see if... Maybe I have a um, like a spot on the camera. Maybe that's why. Huh. You know what? I think that did it. It's better now, isn't it? No, it's not. Wait. No, maybe it is. Yeah, I think it's better now. DJ, how did you get so smart? It's better, right? Well, in Palm Springs, you would, you guys would love the rain. How hot is it there today now? Wow. DJ, did that help? I think it did, didn't it? That spot was really driving me crazy because it looked like a big shadow on my page. All right. So does everybody have this basic sketch kind of down? I know it's really rough, but um, it looks like they're going up the street with this perspective. We're gonna do it real loose and sloppy. And give you guys uh... thanks, DJ. That helped a lot. Maybe I think down here I just want like one more tree. One more tr tree. Well, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. We need something to connect these two sides. So maybe we'll just have another tree there that's way down. Maybe we'll make that one a different color to break it up. I'll put some birds in here. So I've, I've used a little bit of this um, charcoal pencil. Uh, it's a carbon sketch by Generals. Oops, there we go. And so if you're just doing thumbnail sketches, it's kind of nice because you can blend with it. It's a little bit messy, but that's the way it goes. All right, well, let's throw a little bit of color on here. And today in my palette, I put, now over here I've used magenta, or you can use like a Quin Rose, anything, a Lizard and Crimson, anything that's got a little bit of a, bluish red, like a cool red. And then I mixed it with um, cobalt. And let me get a, but today what I'm gonna do is try, because um, I sent Irene some paints and she has pyrrole red in her Palette. And so I thought maybe I'd try that and mix that with some 
uh, either ultramarine blue or cobalt. So here's the pyro red. And I used to use a lot of cad red, but I'm trying to get away from that because of the cadmium in it. So the pyro red with, now this is with cobalt, gives you this kind of purple. which I'm not really liking it that much because it's not very transparent looking. So let's try it with ultramarine. So we'll take a little ultramarine blue. That's looking better. And we'll mix that with pyrrole. Ooh, I got a lot of red in there. And that's kind of interesting. But it's still not giving me that magenta color that I love which is right here. See it adds that little pop of pink. So I think you all are going to have to go out and get magenta because it's just so pretty. You need that color. And the one I'm using is uh, quinacridone magenta. Daniel Smith makes one. Um, I also have Quinn Violet. That goes a little more um, purpley. It's, it's very saturated purple. Um, I also have a Windsor Newton Permanent Magenta. So, um, yeah, I had hopes for this Pyro Red, but it just, it's just not giving me the color I want. Let's see what happens if I use cerulean with it. That gives you a nice gray with cerulean blue. And cerulean is even more opaque, so it would be a nice gray wash for something, but a really nice gray wash, but it's not what I want for this. So Irene, I don't know what to tell you with that pyro red. It's just not, see, alizarin crimson is much more, it has a lot more blue in it, and it just, it's so beautiful, but it's fugitive. And so they've made now alizarin crimson hue, which is supposed to be more stable, but um, alizarin is, is kind of been my workhorse for years in the reds that I use, and um, you know, I guess I need to find a, a better substitute for that. Um, I don't know. The other thing you can put on your palette is um, uh, rose. Um, quinacridone rose. Which is even more of a pinky kind of thing. Let's see what happens if I mix this with a tiny bit of phthalo. I'm not really liking it, and it's hard for you to see. Oh, it makes a very nice um, burgundy color. But it's very staining, and I don't know. It's just not what I want. So I would suggest try your... Um, I guess just use ultramarine and a little bit of your red. For That's the best you're going to be able to do today, I think, with those colors, just like that, for your background there. And um, yeah, going to have to get you some more paint. Kevin sounded interested in joining the stream. He's welcome if he wants to. Okay, so 
there's my this is my red with uh, blue it's not horrible it's just not as perky as the Quinn color and this is our magenta see how pinky it is DJ knows that I like pink flowers so that's why we were gonna do that today all right well what I did was I mixed that magenta with my a little bit of ultramarine and that's how I got my background color so anyway okay well let's do a little mock-up of this we'll just put a little watercolor on our sketch and then if we want we can paint it um, we can paint it on real watercolor paper so what I did first is I took a little bit of yellow ochre and put it in the background just a tiny bit and kind of let that be there and then of course I took my magenta with my blue and I dropped in some of that into the sky just a little and we'll just keep going with the yellow ochre on these buildings since we put them in there now mine will appear a little bit gray, gray down because of the charcoal on my on my page alright and as I come down I'm just going to add a little bit of green in there you can mix up whatever green you want lemon yellow with cobalt or ultramarine um, if you have a you just want a nice vibrant medium green with yellow in it so I'm just going to splash a little bit of that in there and when you're putting it in in there try to vary it a little bit and add a little bit of yellow along with it so that it kind of mixes on the paper. It's kind of hard to, to do that on this sketchbook paper, but you want to try to vary it a little bit. And maybe over, maybe I add a little bit of cobalt to this side over here. Maybe this one's got a little shadow there. So it's not just one big green color. And then coming down the street, I'm just using that. I'm just going to gray this down a little bit. Oops, that looks like a lot, but. And maybe down the center of the street, there's a little more yellow ochre. Just give it a little base. Carly, do you know if Kat's working today? She probably is. Carly, by the way, I made your um, cashew cream yesterday. Carly's been posting these fantastic uh, vegan recipes on her um, Instagram page. And uh, I don't know what it's called that you made, Carly. If you want to type it in, DJ might know. But um, she takes raw cashews and soaks them for three or four hours or whatever. Mine I soaked overnight because I didn't use them um, quickly. And they're still okay. So then I put them in the blender. She told me to blend them up with, um, I use tofu, uh, 
one, I think it's a 14 ounce package of uh, firm tofu. I, I drained it really good first. And then I put it in the blender with the cashews. And then I added um, two tablespoons of vinegar, one lemon, lemon juice, um, salt and pepper, and what else? I don't know, I blended it all up. It needed a little more water, so I added just regular water because um, the cashew water had gotten a tiny bit you know, discolored. I didn't wanna use it because it sat for almost too long. But um, I blended it up and it's in the fridge. I didn't taste it today, but yesterday it tasted pretty good. I think I can use it. The only thing is I did, I put the whole thing in Weight Watchers because I'm trying to do Weight Watchers, so I put the whole recipe in there, made the whole recipe, and um, it's not bad. Uh, let me look and see what the point value was. Oh, I don't know if I can do that on here. Oh, I have to do it on my other computer. Never mind, because I had to use the laptop to, um, to do the recipe on Weight Watchers. I don't remember how many points the whole, that whole thing was. It was probably like 23 or 24 points for the whole, for a whole cup of it. But um, anyway, and then I had another, and then I had another batch. I had, I made another cup of cashews and I put it in with just water to blend it up. And I wasn't sure what seasoning I wanted to put in there. I thought maybe I'll make cashew cream cheese or whatever. I couldn't decide. So I just blended it up with water and tasted it and was like, oh my God, this is really good. <laughs> um, so, but that just, oh no, I made the recipe and Weight Watchers with the coconut milk in it, the coconut milk light to make it up like a dip. Like I put the recipe in just to see how many points it would be. And it's like two points per tablespoon. So cashews are really high points, but um, it'll be nice to use anyway on sandwiches and stuff because I can use, you know, probably two tablespoons on a sandwich or whatever. But, um, yeah, that was kind of fun messing around with that. Joe was looking at me like, what on earth is she doing? Is my chat still okay? All right, so my page is still damp in my sketchbook, but we're gonna continue on here. And, you know, I was thinking, Irene, if you have, let me look to see what colors you have in your, um, oh, I'm looking for one of my paint books. Where is it? I'm thinking that if you have a purple color in your um, in your set of paints, you can probably use that. Just dilute it. for a sketchbook I can't find. Uh. Mm -hmm. Well, that's funny. Anyway, if you have purple, use it. Because sometimes like a dioxazine purple or a Windsor violet, you can thin it out and add a little red to it and you might get like a magenta color, something more pinky. I just don't know if you have that color in your kit, Irene. Oh wait, here's my, okay, this is what I'm looking for. Um, nope, Irene, you didn't get that in your kit. So I guess you have to go with your, well, you probably have some purple acrylic laying around, but you could thin that out with water and use that. <laughs> he 
you need the secret recipe to get fat? Oh, well, you just join join the kitchen here with Joe, and you'll get fat really quickly if you don't have any um, willpower, because he's always cooking up something. That's the first thing he asks me every day: is what should I take out? Should I take anything out to barbecue tonight? Which is a good thing. So, Carly, you're all caught up now. Okay, so we were talking about the recipe. And um, <laughs> I blended up all my cashews, so I wanted, I couldn't, I don't know the name of the recipe that you made with the, um, well, there were two different ones you made one with potatoes. I think DJ would like them. And then another one you made with the cashew cream and the tofu, which I made just the cashew cream and the tofu cashew mixture yesterday. No purple. Yeah, Irene, I know. Do you have any in acrylic, in your acrylic paints? Don't mix your acrylic paints on your watercolor palette, but you can mix them on a separate um, plate and then thin it out and add that if you want. Okay. Anyway, doesn't matter. Your, your trees will just be a little bit more um, a little bit more of a dull purple color, unfortunately. But okay, so Carly, I just put in a, a little yellow ochre and a little bit of the Quinn Magenta mixed with um, a tiny bit of Ultramarine for the sky. And then just a grayed down mixture for the sidewalks. And I continued the yellow ochre down the street. And um, I just use a couple different colors for green and let them kind of mix on the page, kind of going from yellow to green to blue. And same thing over there. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about the acrylic, Irene. Just work with what you have. Just use red and blue to make purple. Um, am I saying it right? Kofta Malai? Anyway, Carly's, if, if you follow Carly on Instagram, She's got some great pictures of her. Um, if you want to post your Instagram, Carly, um, great pictures of her cooking. So, and a lot of her recipes are vegan that she does. So, all right. So now let's go ahead and get splashy with some of this purple and blue here, or blue and a little ultramarine and a little. So I'm just going to put it in here to suggest these wisteria trees. And I want to leave a lot of holes space um, to get that kind of light coming through. And Maybe this right side will be a little bit lighter, so I'll stay more with the cooler red. And on the other side, we'll have that be a little bit uh, darker shadow blue. And then what I do is just thin out what I already have on my brush with a little bit of water and add a little more of that here and there to the sky and kind of connect the two a little. Just to give the sky a little more. And then kind of just mess it up with a damp brush 
to take out a little bit of paint. See how you do that? There we go. Potato dumplings, those look so good. Irene, I'll have to send you her uh, pictures of her recipes that she made. Kathleen, if you find her on Instagram, um, you can see in her feed. I think that's where I saw them, isn't it, Carly? All right, so now on the other side, add just a little bit more blue to your purple to mix it up a little. And drop that in there around this other tree. And here I'm going to even try to suggest it. And right into the wet sky there, just let it go a little bit crazy. Try to um, make the edges random. And you can even just do that. Just give it a squiggle. Drop, Just drop it in and then let it be. And down here as we come down, I want to actually sort of splatter it around this tree so the edges are um, kind of and then maybe just do random shapes like this. And thin out your paint a little and kind of smush your brush around to give it, suggest the color, but you still want to see a little bit of the green coming through there. And as you're coming down the page, you can, if you feel like you need to add a little more yellow in there for a little pop along the edges of these trees, you can. But just remember, anytime you touch the wet wash you already have down there, it's going to bleed into it and run a little. And I think I'd like a tiny bit more sharper green. So I'm just going to pick up my green, which is, um, uh, it's like a Kelly green. I can't think of the name of it. Hunter green, Kelly green, no. Anyway, it's this color green. But then I add a little bit, because that's too green, you got to add a little bit of blue to it to tone it down. And that's what I'm going to put right into here give that a little bit more and then it's a little too blue so I'm just gonna drop in a dab of yellow to it with not too much more water you can dab a tiny bit of yellow up into the purple part too if you want and the bottom edge is just with a damp brush just let it wash down a tiny bit You can do the same thing to the other side if you want to. Here I think I'd like a little bit of wisteria. Just on the edges there. And you can hit the edges with a damp brush too, um, so it doesn't look like a, you know, a hard edge. Just give it a little tap, 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 to soften it. How's everybody doing? Wow, keto bread. Is that the recipe with flour and yogurt? 
I see that a lot on the Weight Watchers, um, people that are posting for Weight Watchers, keto bread. They just mix like equal parts, I think, of yogurt and um, flour. And then they form it into all kinds of different shapes, pizza and everything else, and cook with it. Keto chocolate chip cookies, those sound so good. I've been doing Weight Watchers for like three days now. I don't think I've lost any weight. Maybe. We'll find out. I don't even want to weigh myself because I don't want to jinx it. All these little tricks we play with ourselves. So I'm just letting you get caught up now. And this is kind of drying. Oh, Carly, thanks. You put your... Um, Instagram up there so everybody can check out Carly's cooking and her recipes and she's got a very cute dog too so and she lives in San Francisco so she posts some pretty amazing pictures <laughs> oh DJ you watched Money Heist isn't that the best ciao Bella ciao 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 Bella Oh, it's just the best. Irene and Kathleen, have you seen it yet? Maybe not. Irene, I think you'd really like that show. It's a series on, um, what, Netflix? Yeah, I think it's on Netflix. You just completed season four? Okay. I think there's, what, eight seasons? So there's a lot. <laughs> Season four in one day. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow. Let me see. I have to pull this chat up. Oops. I'm going to switch over to... Okay. So I'm watching my stream on my on my OBS um, screen, and on Restream, I'm not sure what it looks like. I guess I can switch over there for a sec. No, I think it looks okay. Yeah. How does the how does it look for you guys? Is this Carly? Is the um, We've got me and the picture and the paintings and and can you guys see the chat too? Yeah, I think so. I just want to know if the chat is showing up good for you guys. What am I in quarantine? Yeah, no kidding. It's such a great series, though. If you, if Kathleen, if you and Irene haven't watched it, you really should um, watch it together and start it as a series. It'll, you won't be able to put it down. It'll keep you busy for a while. So get out the skinny pop and some diet cokes. Oh, you use almond flour. Okay. I'll have to find I'll have to see the recipe, Irene. I'll call you and get it from you. Cuz I know if you're making it, it's probably really good. Oh, sorry. Big yawn. <laughs> Okay, you're going to do it today. Excellent. Oh, 
Oh, you can see my chat and you can see it in YouTube just fine. So what I can do then is move my chat off the page and let's see, then you don't have to see it. But then I have to, actually I can't really move it off the page um, and still see it here. Oh, I know what I can do. Wait a minute. I can just, let me get rid of this. So, um, this browser one, I'm going to turn this off. Okay, now, uh, I can make this bigger if I wanted to. I can move my palette up to the top. For some reason my palette camera is not working. It's stuck. I don't want to mess with it right now. I can move me over here though. I can make me bigger. There we go. Should make my palette bigger. The thing is with OBS, the software, is I always have, there's always some camera that's not quite working. Oops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Here comes Instagram. Uh, let me get back out of there. Where's my OBS? Here we go. So is everybody caught up on the painting so far? And Carly, did you get paints? Were you able to find paints in the sketchbook and all that stuff? Or are you just doing the drawing? Let me try to get this camera working. Ugh. No, I better just, I'm not gonna mess with it, otherwise I'll screw it up. Never mind. Okay. Oh, wait, I got more chat here. I'm missing. Oh, okay, you're using watercolor pens. All right. Yeah, um, Oops. Yeah, watercolor pens, I don't know. I mean, you can put them, put them down and then blur them, right, a little bit? It's, yeah, it's probably going to be a little different. But anyway, you can get the sense of it, and then when you get some um, watercolors, you can, you can, um, Try again. Okay, so finishing up, let's put some darks on these figures. So I'm going to add uh, a little ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. To get a little bit of dark for this guy. We're going to make this guy the dark side, and we're going to give his girlfriend the pink dress. Here we go. I want to try to give her a little pink purse there, too. That doesn't look too funny. <laughs> And back to some burnt sienna for his head. And they're walking into the scene, I guess, at this point, since I just did the back of his head. And 
we'll do the back of her head a little bit lighter with maybe some um, you can use uh, ochre, yellow ochre or raw sienna or you can use burnt sienna make her hair dark too and while I've got her up right there I'll connect her to the car with a dark another dark for the car kind of just let that be and then maybe I give a little red tail light right there it might be kind of hard for you to see and now I'm gonna get a little bit crazy with my reflections I'm going to pick up some dry burnt sienna and not a lot of water on your brush, mostly just a tiny little dot of burnt sienna paint on a dry brush and I'll just quickly sketch in legs on these guys. The faster and sketchier you do it, the better. Let's give him a little more weight there and then same thing with the guys in the background. And these people in the background, I made one of them red back here, this guy. And his little companion, I just used burnt sienna, like a brown. You can kind of let those two bleed together and just suggest legs, nothing fancy. I'm going to lift a little bit of that dark color off the left side of that guy to suggest the light coming down the middle of the street on him. <laughs> okay DJ we'll bear with you it's nice of you to follow along though even though you're not painting that must be hard to do remember every here and there where um, you see a hard edge if, if it's too hard you can mess it up a little by just going in with a damp brush to give it a softer feel. All right, so now I think what I'm going to do is um, put in a little bit more of my reflection color coming off of these things. And so pick up the same kind of purple ish and use a little bit bigger brush. Because this is all about these reflections coming down the street here. Um, on a rainy day. So just plop in your purple color and let it come down the street like that and then suggest the color uh, coming off of your subjects here. So a little red reflection on that one. And this guy's got a little blue reflection, or black, because he's, ooh, that's way too blue. Let's just add a little burnt sienna to that and get his reflection there and hers and the reflection from that car which is a little you know it's a dark car so make the reflection a little bit of a dark shape coming down there and 
And our dog we didn't put in at all yet, so we're just gonna give the suggestion of a dog with a little reflection coming off of him. And pretty soon you've got a rainy day looking street scene. And finally we'll add just details. The back of this car, maybe the window is a little bit a little bit of a windshield there. The little bluish gray. And we'll give maybe on the edge of this guy's face just a little indication of whoops. A little red there. And we'll get this red. Put a little red in that tail light and get the reflection coming down from that tail light in the bright red. I'm going to zoom in here a little more so you can see it a little bit better. I'll put a little tiny bit of red on our handbag too. And then let's go ahead and add some an indication of these tree these tree um, the trees what do you call them <laughs> so a little burnt sienna and maybe a little ultramarine for this you want pretty much a dry brush to just like put them in there quickly and a couple little branches here and there not too many the faster you flick those in like this with the tip of your brush the better dog. You can watch as your reflections are drying and if they appear to be drying up a little bit too light, go ahead and drop in a tiny bit more color. Carly, I'd love to see what you've done so far if you want to send me a picture of it on Instagram or Kathleen if you want to. Um, I can share it or not share it depending on how you feel about it. I'm just going to go back to my, I can get back, wait what happened here, get me back, there we go, and so a couple more flicks of the brush here to indicate these little tree shapes, and I'm really liking burnt sienna, the burnt sienna color with the purple and the magenta and the yellow. It just warms it, warms it up. I never felt I was very good at doing tree branches, but there we go. I like a few little dots of that burnt sienna in the bottom of those trees. <clears throat> hey, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, Spicy, how are you? Or Jerry, either one. Yeah, I figured out how to do, how to stream on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. So you're on Twitch, right? And you miss the emotes? 
Yeah. On Twitch, you can add all these fun little characters. When someone jumps onto your stream, you'll get, you can get notified, and there's all kinds of fun things you can do on there. No wonder the kids love it, right? Yeah, I love these colors. It's kind of a quin quinacridone magenta color, and um, uh, we were inspired last week. We painted. Um, some wisteria from my garden uh, for Mother's Day weekend, and that's why. So Jerry, or yeah, Spicy, who just jumped on the stream, Spicy lives in Atlanta, near Atlanta, and so, and he is a graphic designer, I think, of sorts, graphic, anyway, he's in the field, and um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if you've never been to the botanical garden in um, Atlanta, you have to go because it's just absolutely fabulous, fabulous. So that's what I think of whenever I see you pop up in the stream. Plus, he's helped me with my um, with my uh, graphics on my Twitch stream a little bit. So. <clears throat> And Jerry's he's he's very funny. He's got a um what is he two year old? No, four year old. So it's hysterical to hear you talking about your kiddos. I'm sure they're they're driving you crazy about now with being at home and all that stuff. Kathleen, remember those days? How could we forget, right? Kathleen last week is Kathleen is my cousin and she's on the stream with um, my with her mom with my aunt and they live in Palm Desert and so um, they're joining us from there today and Kathleen and I both took our sons camping uh, at the beach in Carlsbad um, probably it must be now what eleven or 11 or 12 years ago and <clears throat> um, I loved it I loved being at the beach I love camping out there but um, and I rem I'll never forget because um, we had a, a grill a barbecue grill at our campsite and we were camping with the tent so we both had tents and the boys were there and they went down to the beach and went swimming and all that. But when we went to cook dinner, <laughs> Kathleen brought lamb chops, <laughs> which I thought was kind of a novelty. You know, I probably had like hot dogs or something. She brought lamb chops. That wouldn't surprise any of the shades, right? But that's what we did. All right, I think we can add a little more reflection to this dog. Just put it in and kind of make it look watery. Just a little more there. So this is kind of how you can take a, you know, an image. Well, this one I didn't use an image. I sort of made up the whole thing. But you can take one of your sketches, and we'll do that next. But And uh, kind of mock it up like this with a little pencil drawing, and then start just putting colors in, uh, you know, stick to a color scheme. Um, but here we've got kind of, you know, opposites attract with the lavender and the, and the yellow. But um, <clears throat> I think it makes a nice, a nice composition. And then what you could do is put it on real watercolor paper and um, you know, have a go at it. The other thing I could do is add a few lines to indicate these sidewalks because right now it kind of looks like they're floating. So maybe just take, I kind of like the idea of doing this with the little purple line. So Jerry, what are you up to today? Sunday with the kiddos, right? Your kids are fun and crazy. 
Twitch changed the banner? What banner? Mine? Oh, you mean, okay, so I think they had that in the works, right? Where the banners were going to be something new? So now what do I do? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Is it the size of the banner that I need to change? I started using um, one of those apps to make some graphics and it's become a lot easier, but I don't know if they have a Twitch banner. They might. Irene says nine. I don't know what she's referring to though. Oops. Oh, the boys were nine at the time when we took them camping? Oh, nine years ago, maybe. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Carly, let's see your sketch. Send it to me on Insta. Oh, here she is. Let's see. Oh, no, she sends it to me on a phone, I think. Yeah, here we go. Oh, my goodness. Wait. Irene's is on the right side. Oh, look at that. I know where Irene's is. Irene's is on the... It's coming up on the bottom. So, this is Irene's drawing. And... It it's kind of cool because it looks like um, it looks like a um, what size is that sketchbook? It looks like a um, an abstract. It's kind of cool. And Kathleen's yours is totally different. Look at that! How cute. One thing you can do, Kathleen, is yours is ready for another layer. So you need to go back over it again with your, you know, put in some darker. Look at the difference in value between yours and mine. So yours looks like you did the first wash, and now you're ready for the second wash. So use kind of a, you know, a good amount of water so you get those nice blooms and everything. And before you do that, you may even want to strengthen, well, maybe not. See the yellows and greens in mine? There, there's a little bit more going on there in the yellow and green in the background. So you can add a little bit more yellow and green, let that dry, and then go ahead and put your, the top part in, your second wash, and then continue on with the rest of this stuff. Your people you can make, um, well, your people and your car, you can make a little bit bigger if you want. And you can put some perspective lines in. And you may as well just go this way. Well, yeah, you can put one here and one here. I see your sidewalk lines there. Those should be more straight across. Let me see Irene's drawing. She's having a real abstraction today. Oh, here's her people. She's just not there yet. Okay, well, we'll let you get more, more going on in there, Irene. Okay, let's see. Nothing from Carly yet. <laughs> Carly might be done. Okay. So you can keep painting, do your second layer and your second wash. And that's usually the way I paint, is I'll paint an initial wash 
with the lighter colors that I want showing through first. And then I'll go ahead and paint the, let that dry, and then do that second wash. And then do the details at the end. And here I can see I still need to put a little bit of shadow on these guys coming down here. Spicy, if you're still there, what are you up to today? Is it hot in Atlanta? Hot, hot. Hot Lana, right? It's coming right over the dog. If I was a better designer, I'd have the dog over here in between. Then it would really be a nice composition. And that's something that... It's a, that's the reason why you do these little mock-ups first before you do your large painting. So you can put those things in place where they should be. This little dog right here, he should be here in the middle. Maybe I can change it just by washing that out. No, not really. Not going to happen. I've got pencil lines in there. And when you have pencil lines, they don't come out after you put watercolor over them. So, <laughs> okay, spicy, you posted a message on Twitch. Hmm, do I? I guess I have to go to Twitch to see that, or should I check it out later? I don't have my Twitch screen open. I have my YouTube screen open right now, but not my Twitch. Maybe I should look at the Twitch screen and see what that looks like, huh? Oh, Carly's showing me the brushes or the pens, the watercolor pens that she's using. Let's see what those look like. Looks like I centered double duty on the photos. Oh, okay, she's using these Arteza watercolor markers, right? Okay. I'll bet they're kind of, are they hard to, um... oh, look at <gasps> Carly, I love it. You've got, you've got a nice, uh, it's got a nice sense of, um, you know, spontaneity there. Let's see if I can. Kathleen's going to take a break. Okay. Let me see if I can get this in the light so everybody can see it. I think it looks fantastic. What size is that, Carly? Is it like a 4x5 or something or 5x7? I'm glad you got the kind of wateriness of the the whole thing. It looks nice. Your pens don't blend as well. You need to figure out how to incorporate the water better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. One thing you might try is to just use your marker pen on on a palette. And then once you mark on the palette, then put a regular paintbrush to it and mix in a little water and blend it. That might work. Those are those Arteza pens. I have um, a few different kinds of... I don't have those, but... Um, I have some other, I have some watercolor markers, but I, I'm just not into markers that much. But these look like they're nice for sketching. Like you could take those on the road and in a, in a little sketchbook and be good. Okay. Oh, Kathleen's taking a break. Oh my God, look at that. What is that? Is that a blueberry cake? Look at this. 
I have to inform you all that Irene is a um, phenomenal cook and baker, and um, that's her pastime is cooking. So when Kathleen said she was going to have a piece of cake, I thought it was going to be leftover carrot cake maybe that she froze from her birthday way back in April. But no, they've got a brand new blueberry caramel or something cake with cream cheese frosting maybe. Wow, that's not on my diet. <laughs> okay, that's good to try it on a small size 5x7, Carly. I think when you're when you're starting to sketch and draw and trying to figure things out you don't have to go large just keep it small and kind of practice and then when you after you kind of get an idea down then you can go larger and try it with your you know nice sheet of watercolor paper and um, you know good materials and all that but I always say your sketchbook is the key to getting better in your skills. It's not trying to do a full out painting. <clears throat> wow, that cake look, looks amazing. Irene, I wish I was there with you guys. Okay, now, let's see. Okay, Jerry, we'll see you later. Um, DJ says, let's see, I gotta get my chat. Well, oh no, I moved it off of there. Those people look like people made by the artist shown by Carolyn earlier. I think it was Jean Sohn. Oh yeah. You mean, which people, DJ? The ones on here or the ones from um, from um, Carly's picture. Ooh, Carly sent, oh, wow, this is beautiful. <laughs> Look at this picture she took in San Francisco today. Is that um, in San Francisco or is it over across the bridge or, wow. Yeah, you can definitely do that. And you know what I need? I need pictures of boats because I never have enough information for all the different stuff on there. All the different rigging and the equipment and the sails and, you know, all those little details add up. That's an interesting composition right there. Remember, you can always do part of your composition. You don't have to just blow it up. You don't have to do the same thing. I mean, the whole image. You can do parts of it. You just want to get to a place where you've got, um, like, maybe something like that. Cut that boat out of there, and then just do that. That might be nice. Make the hills in the background a little bit bigger, a little taller. That's pretty. Wow, okay. All right, well. Let's see if <laughs> I still want to know what kind of cake that was. It looks really good. Just adding a little more blue to this shadow here. Or this reflection, I guess it is. Okay. And, whoops, I didn't mean to put blue in there. I was going to put a little more of this lavender right here.
Oh, it's just five minutes from your place? Nice. The people that Carly made, they look like the one from Jean Sewn. Yeah. Yes. And I was looking over some of those images earlier, too. And today I saw some more um, in this book. Let me just pull this up a little. I was looking for some examples of, you know, like uh, wisteria or flowers in a street scene. And this is the En Plein Air book by Ron Stoke, who is, I've talked about him before, he's an artist in Washington State in Seattle. And look at this one. So the shapes in this are so simple. And I think as a plein air painter or sketch, urban sketcher, whatever you want to do, it's good to zoom in on your subject and identify the big shapes, like I always talk about, and the lights and dark. And look at here how he cleverly saved that light, which your eye zooms right into, and then the little black gate right in front of it. But what I, what I wanted to show you is the suggestion. There's the purple, lavender colored wisteria or whatever they are. And oftentimes with flowers, just giving a suggestion of them is all you need. Isn't that cool? Try to get the light just right. Maybe I can. But, whoops. Hold on, I have a failure here. Oops, wrong way. I have a feeling that's gonna fall. Oh, there we go, okay. I can put it down. Let's see if that looks better now. Oh, there, that's much better. And look at how he suggests those tree branches coming down from the top of the page. And notice on that tree that there's hardly, on this side, you know, there's hardly any foliage, just a suggestion of a little bit there. And this all this light in the background. But the whitest value, the lightest, is right there in the middle. That's pretty clever. And of course he has these reflections coming down here. Isn't that nice? So I wanted to share that with you today. So when you're thinking about planning your, your paintings, keep that in mind. All right. And maybe there's one other tip from his book that I'll share that I really like. And it's mixing grays. So he gives four examples, but I'll just show you a couple. Oh, Irene, lemon blueberry. <laughs> she made two cakes last week. She's running out of people to give cakes to. <gasps> no, I'm sure. You know what, Irene? If you posted that on your community page that you had cake, man, you'd have people running over there for cake all day long. <laughs> DJ wants some, and I do too. DJ says he can accept cake from anywhere in the world. And you know he's in India, so. <laughs> he sent you a cute message. Irene, you're down 21 pounds on your keto diet? Wow. That's really good. We'll see how I do on my Weight Watchers. What kind of cake did you make? You made two cakes. What was the other one? 
That's funny. Okay, let's see. All right, I want to do... I'm trying to grab some paper. And... Oh, let's see. Ooh, here's a nice piece of paper okay so you guys know I, I'm always making up little color charts and Irene you can do this too practice mixing a few of your colors um, now on this one this was a study with Quinn Rose so I used it and mixed it with all these different colors, with phthalo blue, with yellow ochre, with cobalt, with ultramarine, with sap green, that's one of my favorites, and then with um, cobalt turquoise light and quinacridone rose. Some people use permanent rose, quinacridone rose, um, and look at the pretty color you get with Quinn Rose and Thalo Blue. It kind of goes a little bit flat, but I do like the color. If it wasn't mixed so much, it'd be really nice. Okay, so, um, anyway, here's the perfect piece of color. So, um, if you have a turquoise color, you can mix it with your red. Now I'm not sure how it's going to work with this pyrrole red. I'm used to using a lizard crimson. But here's the pyrrole red, and I really prefer a lizard crimson. Maybe we'll get a good amount on there. And then we're going to mix it with um, cobalt, um, I'm sorry, turquoise. So here's a turquoise color, and this should turn out to be really pretty. Look at that. It's like just the perfect balance of a nice gray color. Isn't that nice? And the turquoise is a little bit heavier than the, it has more opaqueness than the, than the pyrrole red. So when you drop it in there, it kind of pushes the red out of the way. And it's just really beautiful. So that's one way to use pyrrole red, Irene. And so let's take that and look at the beautiful gray color that you get with it. It's not a dead gray, it's very lively. Okay, so while we're at it, why don't I go ahead and make a note that this is pyrrole red plus um, turquoise. And what color turquoise do I have on there? Oh, I think I wrote it down. Let's see. It is cobalt turquoise light. Cobalt turquoise light. Beautiful. All right. So the next one is our purple, which would be like a dioxazine purple or Windsor violet and burnt sienna. Now, I don't have any purple purple on my palette, believe it or not. So let me see if
I don't see it there, but this is my other palette, and I have Mineral Violet on here, which is not going to be exactly the same thing, but it'll be interesting to see it nevertheless, so why don't we try it? So Mineral Violet um, is a color that Joseph Spukvich uses once in a while. if I'm remembering correctly. And um, so if we mix that, there it is, mineral violet. And I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to that. Burnt sienna. Let's see if we get a nice warm gray out of that. Yeah, it's going kind of to a warm brown. But if I thin it out, let's use a little more. It is a really pretty, um, let's go ahead and blend it. It's definitely more on the red shade. Um, and if I drop in some more um, burnt sienna, you can warm it up a little more. But it's still not going gray like the purple would. So, and I don't know where my dioxazine violet is right now or I do it because I'm really curious. In the book, in his book, look what he does with, well, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but this is purple and burnt sienna together, which gives you a nice neutral gray, but a little bit on the purpley side. Mine is not quite there with mineral violet. Okay, and dioxazine purple is a dark color, you know, to begin with. But anytime you add a warm color to it, especially burnt sienna, it makes a nice gray. Okay. <laughs> Terry's going to stop watching. She's probably getting hungry. She's probably going to go out and make a cake. She's probably running out to the store to get some blueberries and lemon. <laughs> I would. Yum. All right, get rid of that. And, oh, Carly's running out too. Okay, guys, it must be getting to be time to end my stream. Everybody's getting tired. Well, I hope that, um, I hope you can try this, maybe try it again on real watercolor paper. And um, you've all got the images now, so you can give it a shot. And I think this week I will try to paint it and um, do a nice painting from this little sketch. And then we'll go from there. And I also wanted to mention for Irene on Friday, let me check the time. I'm pretty sure it's 1 o'clock. Friday, so it'd be like at, yeah, it would be at 10 a.m. Is that one? Yeah, and for you too, DJ, at 10 a.m. on Friday, there's a lady who paints flowers on Instagram Live, and um, I can't think of her name right now. Oh, I'm going to have to find it for you because... Um, I don't think I have it written down. But she does very loose, pretty flowers, and she's got it set up so she's doing it every Friday, probably only for like a half hour. Sometimes she'll go a little longer. But this week I painted along with her, and um, I did this, which she didn't even finish on her stream. But it's a nice little practice. 
And let me try to figure out who she is so I can well I may have to um, send you her link if I don't see it here mm. she was in my stories earlier today she does nice stories on Instagram too let me see Yeah, I, I don't I don't have her right here, but anyway, she's one to paint with. And of course she offers lessons too. Um, but I thought that was pretty. Okay, Kathleen, Irene, we'll talk to you guys later. And DJ, I hope your paints arrive soon. I know you're, you've been waiting for them. Where do you have to order them from? You know, DJ, I, um, I'm not sure what kind you ordered, but... I was listening to or watching a Instagram live today and yeah I'm not finding I'm looking through my <laughs> try to find and um, there was another artist I think he's from India what was his name um, Amit Kapoor do you know Amit Kapoor anyway he did a live stream today which was really, really nice of him to do. And he mentioned that he uses the Mediho, Mediho Mission Gold watercolor paints, and he says that he loves them, and they're a third of the cost of, you know, like all the big brands, like, you know, Daniel Smith and Schminke and Windsor Newton, whatever. Um, but I've never used the Mission Gold, so it might be worth a try if you see them. I might even give them a try. But I have I have quite a few paints right now, but as I run out, I may, you know, if I see them somewhere on special, I may pick up a few to try them out. So. <laughs> Jerry. Jerry, you're cute. <sighs> Go give your kids a hug. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'll have to look at my Twitch stream and see what's going on there. See if I can see the new uh, covers. And I'm not seeing my, my lady in here that does the flowers, but anyway. Okay, guys, well, <laughs> I guess I'll sign off. And we'll see you... Uh, Next week, look at how pretty that's drying. It's a nice mauve color now. We'll see you next week, if not before. And maybe this week I'll do a couple of um, Instagram videos, maybe, to post. Or Instagram Lives, if I get ambitious. We'll see. <laughs> Am I twitching during the week? No, I haven't been. And I'll tell you why. I've been on a crusade to learn Instagram better. And then um, um, just streaming and doing things in general. And, of course, painting. It seems like it takes forever to learn all these new things. So that's what I've been busy with, Jerry. But um, no, I haven't been twitching during the week. And you're, you're twitching on Wednesday evenings, right? I should tune in um, one of these. I'm going to try to do that this week. I'm, looking, I'm still looking through here to see if I can find... Here's a guy painting on the beach. Do you all know this guy? 
He must be French, right? That's a nice image by the water. Ooh, these are some pretty flowers. Oh, okay. I know it's hard to keep a Twitch schedule up, isn't it? It's really hard for me. Hmm. Look at this happy guy. There's so many good artists on Twitch. Yeah, he's done. Huge thing with the trees. Look at those big simple shapes with the shadows going across. You all can do that now. You can. All right, well, I don't see what I was looking for on here. And maybe this week I can get on Twitch again, too. I don't know. I should probably try to broadcast at least one more day a week. It's It's been kind of tough lately. Um, but I always feel like I should plan, have something ready and, and kind of plan it rather than just winging it. But um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It takes away a little bit of the spontaneity, I think, sometimes, unless I really am just determined to work in my sketchbook and not really care about the final outcome. But on Sundays, I think I try to guide you more through the process of doing the painting. And maybe I'll slow down and do that a little a little bit slower so you can really get it. I think I, I generally go pretty fast, but maybe on Sundays now I'll slow it down for some of the more beginning painters and then during the week maybe I'll just do a sketchbook practice thing on um, look at this how great this is this guy's got look at those simple big shapes and the contrast beautiful he's got everything going on there he's got contrast of light and dark he's got contrast of hard and soft edges he's got contrast of small and large shapes in just the right proportion. Excellent. Excellent job. That's what you're looking for. At least that's what I'm looking for when I'm trying to paint. It doesn't always happen that way, but that's an excellent example of beautiful work. Like I say, most people, when I go to workshops, most pe and well, most people want to learn how to paint looser. They don't want to learn how to paint tighter. Anyway, okay guys, well, it's been fun. I guess I'll sign off and we'll talk to you during the week. Anything pops up, let me know. In uh on Instagram and I'd love to see what you're all working on if you want to send me a picture that would be great send me pictures of what you're working on DJ that means you <laughs> you too all right guys I'm gonna end the stream it's been fun we'll talk to you later Make sure. Bye-bye. <laughs> they can always see the video over and pause it. Oh, that's true. That's true, they can. Although on, um, on YouTube, I've... A couple of the videos that I've done I think I might turn into real lessons 
so I've taken them and put them on private um, but for you guys I would I can send you the link if you want to see the video I think I can do that even though they're still on private but in any event I can download the thing and send it to you if you need but um yeah and then excuse me I also noticed that YouTube has flagged a few of my videos for copyright content, uh, copyright um, violation or whatever, because I must have had some music on in the background they didn't like, even though I always try to, to um, you know, I use copyright-free music, but some of it apparently isn't, so it gets flagged. And a couple of my videos, the sound has been cut out, so I don't know if I can work with them to get the sound back or not, but it's the way it is. So anyway, all right. Talk to you guys later. Sleep tight.